welcome to another episode of How to Pretend to Like Sports. It is the week of December 6th. So it's already been an interesting week so far. Over the weekend, I had a handyman come hang my TV. I hired like a random task rabbit, probably a rookie mistake. And the TV wall that I wanted it hung on shares a wall with my bathroom. So I was taking a shower yesterday and I look at like the little shelf, tile shelf where my shampoo hangs and all of that hangs, sits. Um, anyway, and there were two holes. I was like, how would these two perfect holes end up in my shower? And then I realized the man who hung my TV, not only did he hang it, off center so I needed to get it re-hung anyway he drilled all the way into the other side of the wall into the tile didn't tell me and that also means that he didn't hang the TV in the studs which I mean if I've learned anything lately it is when you're hanging something heavy hang it into the studs so that was interesting. My garbage disposal broke because just all this stuff always happens all at once, right? So the guy who came today to fix my garbage disposal, which he fixed it, there was a screw in it. It was like super rusted and old, so who knows how that happened. I'm not gonna take responsibility for that one. And so I asked him if he could also help me with the TV situation. So I showed him what the other guy did and he was like, yeah, that's not a great job. But he was like, I don't wanna risk drilling into the tile again. So I'm not gonna do it. Then I was like, okay, now this TV is back sitting on my floor. What am I gonna do? Me being me, decided to take it into my own hands and I get the new TV mount because it's a frame TV and the guy who originally hung it didn't hang it on the correct mount. So Samsung sent me a new frame TV mount so that it can be properly hung. That's probably half the problem. But I was like, I'm gonna take it into my own hands. So I get the box out, lay out all the steps. And I'm like, I've done this before. I've hung this same exact TV down here before I had the shelf, that's where the TV was. And I want it in my room. And so I go to the mount that he puts in, that he put in, and unscrew the first half of the mount, the part that didn't go into the tile, it went into a stud properly. And then I go to the other one, and I notice he originally had done two holes in, in the stud because I had my stud finder, but then he made new holes to the left of that, which then explains why the TV was too many inches to the left. And it was literally impossible for me to unscrew those nails. I tried my drill that like also works as a screwdriver. I tried just doing it manually because you know sometimes it unscrews more easily if the drill thing isn't going so fast. That didn't work so I took that as a sign that I should not try to do it myself so my friend Adriana recommended a guy that she knows in Dallas who does like her TVs every time she moves he does TVs for her friends all the things I should have called him in the first place kicking myself for that but he said he's gonna come tomorrow I sent him pictures all the things so fingers crossed but we are gonna focus on the biggest one, which is the garbage disposal, because there is truly nothing more annoying in a house than when the garbage disposal breaks. Like it's something you literally don't ever think about. I think about the dishwasher, I think about the fridge, all these different things. I never think about the garbage disposal, yet it's the most inconvenient thing in the world to break. So, glad that's resolved. So an exciting, sports news, TCU made it to the playoffs. I was so nervous because 
They lost to K-State in the Big 12 championship game on Saturday. I was with my mom and we were putting things in frames and just doing house stuff and had the game on in the background. And I'd react and she was like, what happened? Like, and I was like, no, no, it's the game. And she was probably just like this lunatic. What is she, what is she doing? But they lost, it was a bummer, but thank goodness it did not affect their chance to get into the playoffs at number three. So they're gonna play Michigan, which my grandparents met at Michigan, so they're not here, but I'd like to think that this would be a fun game for all of us to experience. So once it became official that TC was in the playoffs, I booked my flight to Phoenix. I think my dad booked his flight to Phoenix. I don't know. I told him to, cause he's going with me. And then I like submitted my ticket request through TCU, which I, don't know, I don't know when I hear back on those tickets, but I mean, worst case, you just get them on StepHub. I also decided to um, look for a festival t-shirt. That's the one that they're in. And I was looking at like the official ones that just came out for this specific Michigan TCU festival. And the Nike shirts that they did are so bad. I literally, the first time I saw it, I was like, was this a mistake? There's no way that this is the approved design that they went with. Like, not good. They, when it comes to these t-shirts, there's a graphic design person who is in charge of this, who understands, like, it's not a complicated thing. It's not like it has to be this, like, fashionable moment, but, like, at least make it look like a professional did it. I mean, I think I think a high schooler could have done a better job. Wild. Just Google it and you will see. I think what really throws me off is that TCU is at the top and then in between they have dots. So, you know, it's like t.c.u. But the dots are the same exact size of the letter and it looks absolutely bonkers. So I did not order one, but I have a lot of questions. That's my personal college football news, but there was more playoff news. So the college football playoffs, how it works right now is that four teams go to the playoffs, two and three play against each other, one and four play against each other. So number two, Michigan against number three, TCU. This is kind of flawed because in this year is a rare example because TCU really did make it but a lot of times it keeps smaller teams smaller schools or those that aren't notorious for always having a really great football program from getting the chance to play in the national championship game so like it's gotten better but and I think it's proof that TCU is in it and the committee did vote to keep TCU in it and not let Alabama in who had two losses, but it could be better. So they agreed to have a 12 team playoff system. So this gives more teams a chance at that specific national championship opportunity. And it was originally supposed to come into effect in 2026 but they voted to bump that up to 2024. So the 2024, 25 season, which is nuts that we're even saying those numbers out loud because that sounds like forever from now, even though I know it's not. So the way it's gonna work is all the bowls are still gonna be the bowls, but the teams playing in certain bowls are going to have that bracket and have the chance to win the quarterfinals, go on to the fine, the semifinals. <laughs> Why was that so hard? Quarterfinals, semifinals, and then national championship. So I think it'll be really good as someone who went to a school that has a good athletic program, but isn't necessarily one of those 
Alabama or Oklahoma or Clemson. The ones that like you just know you can bank on being picked for a national championship game. So that's to come. I think it'll be great. I haven't really seen a lot of complaints on it. I mean, people on Twitter find a complaint about everything, so I don't really count just like the people complaining to complain. But I think it's great. So other football news. Baker Mayfield was released from the Panthers this week. So he, when he was drafted, he went to Cincinnati Bengals? Nope. Andy Dalton was there. He went to Cleveland Browns. So he went to the Cleveland Browns and played there for a bit. And then he went to the Carolina Panthers and now he is bye bye So based off of where he's at in his career, he went onto the waiver wire. I hear the word waiver wire all the time. Could not define it for you. I looked it up for you though. Um, I looked up the NFL definition of waiver wire. For fantasy football, I haven't gone there yet. I've literally never gotten that detailed into my fantasy football team. But, so how the waiver wire works is that if a player has played less than a certain amount of time, I want to say four seasons, y'all can fact check me and let me know, but four seasons, then if they get released by a team, that player automatically goes to the waiver. And what the waiver is, is an opportunity for other teams to claim this player. So there's 24 hours that teams have to make this claim. So within 24 hours of this, in this case, Baker going onto the waiver, they have 24 hours to tell whoever it is you tell in the NFL that you want that player. But the choosing of who it goes to has to do with the draft pick order. So it doesn't necessarily like, it's not the first person to like say dibs um, and it goes there, but it has to do with the draft order. So if this player had played more than the required amount of time to go on the waiver, then they would have just been an unrestricted free agent. So that is my Monica's definition of sports, sports terminology. So as of recording this podcast, don't know where he's going to go, but people are saying that the Rams are looking at him. Baltimore might need a quarterback. Uh, San Francisco might need a quarterback. So what's happened there is Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G, he broke his ankle, broke his foot um, in the last game against Miami. So he, while he was a starter last year, this year he lost the job to Trey Lance, but then Trey Lance broke his ankle. So Jimmy G came back in, but now Jimmy G's ankle or foot is broken. And we're just reliving every six weeks here, apparently. So, I mean, they could use a quarterback probably. So we'll see. But as of right now, I don't know. Also, in World Cup news, did y'all see that one of the Qatar stadiums is like is being taken down? It's made with like all reusable materials and it can be taken down and they even said that it can be moved around like all over the world so for when it's in the U.S. that stadium can be picked up and moved and while I understand the sustainability around that which is great all for saving the planet because we know it's not it's not doing great like the carbon footprint of moving that halfway across the world, doesn't that kind of just become the same thing? Like, that's a lot of material to move halfway around the world. 
I don't know. Um, and then I just saw that Spain is out, US is out, but Brazil and England's team seem promising. But if you had hopes of watching more US soccer watch parties, that has come to an end. In more like podcasts, not necessarily sports news, I don't want to forget, I published to YouTube, is that the correct term? My first vlog. So I filmed it on Sunday and it's just like a silly little vlog of a day in the life of me at home with the dogs. Um, so you can check that out on YouTube. It's the same place where I'm uploading these podcast episodes. So that probably goes against like every marketing rule on the planet where like you're going to confuse your audience if you post your podcast, sports stuff here, and then lifestyle stuff here. But at the end of the day, when I'm creating content, I think it just all fits under the lifestyle bucket. And that's always been my hardest thing as a content creator, which I've been doing this for over 10 years. So I've been through like every phase of content creation and new platforms, platforms going away, bye-bye Vine. I never really got into that one, but you got what I mean. And everyone's always like, niche down, niche down. And maybe if I had really, really niche down, I would have a much more successful creator career. But with my personality and like my interest, it's just, it's just impossible. But what's also impossible is having multiple different channels, platforms, all the things and having to publish everywhere. No one has time for that. Even if you were a full-time creator, that is insanely time consuming and you would literally need to have an assistant do that for you. So my lifestyle, vlogs, videos, all that are gonna live in the same place in YouTube. Um, and it's the same thing for like my Instagram. Like at first I was gonna have this podcast be a different Instagram account and I tried to do that and again it's just too much work because I also end up posting something to the new account which has a lower following and then I repost that to the current account because that's where my following is from over the last 10-12 years and it just becomes a lot of duplicate work and I'm just we need to simplify 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 otherwise I'm gonna get burnt out I've gotten burnt out before a million times I know the signs that I'm about to burn out. So what I've realized this year is that I really need to, in terms of content creation, really simplify where I'm posting. I honestly have been going back and forth about TikTok because I know it'd be good, but it's one more thing and it doesn't excite me. And I know Instagram Reels I know a lot of people are like, that's for old people. Well, I am an old person. I am a millennial. All the Gen Z people are saying that like, Instagram reels are lame, but whatever. If I'm on them, other people are. So, I mean, good enough for me. But anyway, on that note, if you're not following me on Instagram or subscribe to the YouTube channel, please do so. It's like a little way to give me a little like heart or like. All right. So that's your episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you all next week.